Hello everyone and welcome to episode 16 of our Fusion 360 Tech Thursday. Uh, today's topic we're going to learn about the inspect menu and this is actually I think an underappreciated menu that has a lot of really cool tools in it. So I'm going to go through uh, most of these and kind of show you how you can use these to help better your designs. Now first of all <clears throat> Excuse me. First of all, I want to thank uh, Trevor Foster. So on my last video that I did where I was talking about folding the, the foam core, um, I was sketching and there was a little window um, that we sketched and I ended up using the extend command to extend those lines. And uh, Trevor made a comment in the comments that you can just use the fillet command and it extends it for you automatically. And I was like, I've been using Fusion for almost four years now, and I didn't know that. So Trevor, two thumbs up. Um, I'm gonna show this live because I think it's really cool. I didn't even realize, in fact, I'll bet you half my coworkers don't even realize you can do this. So uh, so check this out. This is what Trevor um, was talking about. So this is, um, again, in regards to the last live stream that I did, I was kind of tracing over this little window area that had these uh, fillets on the corners, and I said, come in and use the extend command to extend these lines, etc. So uh, what Trevor was saying is you can actually come in and just say fill it. And when you get click on one edge and click on the other, you can see it kind of gives you a little bit of a preview. But when you click, it actually extends the lines for you. So way faster <laughs> than having to do the uh, extend command. So again, Trevor, two thumbs up really appreciate you posting that out there for everybody else to see so great job okay um, let's dive in so what we're gonna talk about is this inspect menu right here and you can see that there's actually uh, quite a few commands in here I'm gonna walk through and show a couple of them that I think are pretty useful so the first one um, I'm gonna go ahead and say measure now I have uh, an assembly up here, a whole bunch of components that I created. Um, and you can see we have selection filters. So select face, edge, or vertex, select body, or select component. And by default, it's usually set to face. And let's say, for example, I wanna know what the overall length of this uh, drill is. So I'm gonna kinda zoom up here and you'll notice it's trying to catch to edges or points on a face or maybe endpoints. I'm gonna click maybe like there, for example. And then I'm gonna come back over here. And as I get kind of near this edge, you can see it's gonna snap right there and I'll go ahead and click. Now this is returning a lot of information to me. So it's telling me that this is about, you know, 10.8 inches long, which is correct. Um, and then I can also see this XYZ Delta. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. And this will make more sense here in just a moment, what this Delta does. But it's basically telling me from this point in the front to this point in the back, it's 10.8 inches. But then it's also telling me in the Y, it's zero. So I know that that's perfectly lined up, okay? And in the Z, I've got this pretty large number, so I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Um, and then it tells me where in space each of my selections were from the origin. So we can kind of see this is where I was from X, Y, and Z on my first pick and X, Y, and Z on my second pick. Okay, so pretty self-explanatory for something like that. But let's do this again. I'm gonna um, restart my selection and I'm gonna go from the tip of the drill to let's just say maybe the, the bottom uh, edge right here, okay? Now you'll notice it's given me the distance in this direction. In fact, it kind of highlights it there, it's 13.28. Not that useful to me in this case, but if I turn on my XYZ Delta, this is what I really like. I think this is pretty cool. So it's actually showing me the height in Z is about, just about eight and a half, okay? Then it's also telling me the distance in X. So really kind of a useful command. Even though these points are nowhere in line with each other, the XYZ Delta gives you 
those distances. So I wanted to point that one out for you. The other thing that's kind of cool is these selection filters. So I could say, for example, I want to know how far it is between particular bodies or components. So maybe I want to know the distance between this component and this component here. And it's kind of hard to see because it's buried in here, but it found the, the smallest distance which in this case is 1.225. So it's a really quick and easy way to measure between components. Okay, And that works exactly the same thing with bodies. You get the exact same result. The, uh, the other thing that I like you can do, uh, let me go ahead and do the edges again. Um, you know, I could click on a particular one edge and maybe pick on another edge like so and it's going to try and find the, the shortest distance uh, between those edges. And it says click to copy the clipboard. So I might want to you know, use this in a formula or something like that. So I could just click it and it copied that into my clipboard. And now I can paste that in my calculator or maybe into a dimension formula or whatever. So all you have to do is click on them. You don't have to highlight them or anything like that. Okay, the, uh, the next one is interference, and I use this one a lot. This is actually quite handy. So I'm gonna go ahead and say interference. And let's just kind of take a look at the, the side of this drill, kind of orthographically. And I wanna see if there's any inter interference going on. So I'm just gonna draw a selection box, kind of like so, okay? And it selects all of these objects. And then you click on this compute. And when I do that, it actually figures out if there's any clashing going on. And I recommend moving the window out of the way because it actually colors, oops, let me zoom out and zoom back in here. It actually colors where the issues are, okay? Um, it also tells me what the target and the tool are, okay? So I can see that my screwdriver bit is interfering with the, the back of the chuck. Now, this is actually a cool drill. Um, this was a Black & Decker drill. I don't know if they carry it anymore, but check this out. I'm gonna, um, let me just figure out where this guy is. So, that's the chuck assembly. I'm just gonna move this. You could actually press these little orange buttons and um, it would pull the chuck off and then there's a screwdriver bit or whatever bit you wanted. And so you could have a drill bit in here, and then you just pull that chuck off, and then you have a screwdriver bit. And I thought that was the coolest invention ever. So uh, um, you don't see those anymore very often. So anyways, that's the design behind this. And because I did the inspect, the interference, I was able to see that there was interference going on between um, the screwdriver bit and the chuck back. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, see here's my chuck back. So let's go ahead and maybe just isolate this and take a look. And I can see that there's not a hole through the front. Um, so maybe I want to turn on the uh, screwdriver bit or whatever. So I'll go ahead and unisolate this. Um, and let's figure out what this guy is. So that's the, the middle of the chuck. I'm gonna turn him off. So sure enough, we can see that the screwdriver bit is clashing through uh, this case or this chuck back. So I need to resolve that. Now maybe we use the cut command, but I would probably come in here and say, um, let's go ahead and isolate him. Let's just sketch on that face and put a, a circle on there. So um, let's just make it 0.5 in diameter. We'll extrude through. I'll say uh, all, say okay. And now we're looking through. And let's run that analysis again. So I'm gonna say unisolate. We'll go ahead and activate the top level. Um, and let's turn everything back on. 
So now I can come in and do my uh, interference. Draw a selection box around it. Now I could do the whole thing if I wanted to, but I'm just wanting to speed things up. Um, so let's go ahead and compute. And now we can see that the only thing we have issues with are, every time I rotate it, it zooms way out, um, is back here, for example. But we can now see that we resolved the issue with the screwdriver bit going through this middle chuck area. Um, and you'll notice, for example, I've got some issues on, on my design. And it's very easy to, to run into issues like this. Oh, of course I get a phone call. Um, so I recommend running your analysis every so often. And what's cool about this is it actually remembers it into, um, well, in some of your analyses, it remembers it as a, into an analysis folder. So. Okay, um, in fact, let me do this really quick. I'm gonna turn off one of these, um, let's turn off this guy here. You can see that there's a lot of components. I've got wiring and switches and the motor and all kind of stuff. So I would probably wanna check for clearance issues and interferences, et cetera, um, in my design. Okay. The next one is validate. So it checks the quality of a surface and attempts to heal it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on validate. And I'm just gonna click on this one face right here. Now, you'll notice it says checking level is standard. Um, and then we also have repair. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say okay right now. And it's checking this surface. And you can see that it's thinking about it. Um, and if there's anything wrong, it's going to come back and tell me that there was an issue or something. Now, this is a pretty complicated surface. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, and it said it found some intersecting or overlapping surfaces. It found two of them. So this is kind of cool. It tells me there's something wrong with this. And if I had said to repair, it would go about repairing it. So you can see when I check repair, it's gonna see if it can heal any gaps that there might be. And if there's a small edge or a small face, do you want it to remove that? Um, you know, if there's bad surfaces, do you want it to kind of like restitch them back together? So, um, so Al asked a good question about, um, what about interference handling parts that are hidden? Um, if somebody could post out into the chat window really quick, um, if, uh, if you're hearing me okay, <laughs> so you can see on the screen that my streaming software stopped and then restarted. So if you guys can hear me okay, please throw something out into the chat window. And there must be a little bit of a delay. Okay, thank you everybody. I appreciate it. Woohoo! Okay, a little nervous there from previous experiences. So, anyways, um, I was responding to to Al's question um, about you know if it's not shown, will it calculate? And the answer is no. It will not calculate. It only calculates what is selected. Now, I didn't show this, but you can see include coincident faces. So you could check to see um, if the uh, faces are touching or not. Um, so, uh, it looks like the, my question wasn't, um, didn't go through. So, Al, the, the answer is if it's not displayed, it will not um, be calculated. So, you can see I drew a selection window. It only selected the parts that were displayed. So, hopefully that answers the question for you. Um, let me go back to here. Okay. So we were talking about um, interference, and then I was talking about validate. And validate allows you to pick a surface, and if you want to repair that surface, it's gonna look for small edges, bad surfaces, etc. And this is great, especially if you're importing geometry from other people's CAD systems that might not have done a really good job with the edges, for example, okay? I don't use that one very often, um, but it is somewhat useful, especially if you do a lot of uh, surfacing. 
The next one is curvature comb analysis. And this is actually quite useful when you start doing more organic shapes, kind of like the, the grip of this drill. What this allows you to do is to select an edge. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this edge here, and you can see I get a little mohawk type looking thing. And what this is showing me is how good this curve is. Okay, So I'm going to pick on a couple different curves, and let's see if we get different results. So that one there actually looks really nice also. You can see a nice, you know, it looks kind of like a comb with a nice edge. Now as I start doing a little bit more complex edges, let's try maybe this guy here. Now that one looks good. So this is a well-designed part. Um, so here's something a little bit interesting. So I see a little bit of a notch right here. So you can kind of see that. And that might mean right kind of near the end where the tangency conditions come together, there might be a little bit of a tweak or something in there. So let me show you a, a better example. I'm going to create a sketch. And I'm going to just use the spline command, like so. And I'm going to do curvature comb analysis. Um, it has to be an edge. So let me go ahead and uh, extrude this guy. So I'll say extrude. And let's just do a curvature comb analysis of this edge. And you can see the really kind of the how it's narrow and then it peaks up and then kind of does the same thing the other direction. So it's actually showing the intensity of the slope. Now this is really good, okay? If I were to come back and maybe change this, like something like this, and let's rotate like that, stop my sketch, curvature comb analysis, so we can kind of see, again, really kind of peaked up right here. So this is saying it's not as smooth as the rest of this line is. So maybe I want to kind of change the, the angle of attack or something of this particular point right here. So I could come back in here and maybe we change the weight and you know the angle of attack or whatever. I'll stop my sketch, do my curvature comb analysis again, and now you can see how it's a little bit smoother. It's a little bit more even through here, okay? And then this over here is kind of showing me how that is probably a little bit tighter than the rest of the spline. So it's just a visual way to kind of see how smooth is this spline. Now you can change the, the density of the comb to help you out. You can also change the scale of the comb to kind of really visually see what it looks like. Okay. Now when I was doing this on the drill, I was getting really nice results and that made me feel really good because that's basically just validating that these are good lines. So here's a good example. Let's see if we can scale this up a little bit. So you can kind of see how smooth that is. And then there's a little bit of a, what I would say, kind of a little bit of a kink right here. Um, and so maybe I would have wanted to change how this spline approached this endpoint back here when I created this part. Okay. So again, used more for like the, uh, more of the surfacing type stuff is the curvature comb. In fact, a lot of this is for surfacing, but the next one is zebra analysis. And I use this one a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and click on zebra analysis. It's asking for the body. So I'll go ahead and let's just click on um, this guy here. Now I get a weird result. Um, I'm going to change the opacity down a little bit. And this is what I really like. Um, you can actually like, put it on top of your object. Now you see a lot of stuff going on as I'm rotating around, but let me zoom up on a particular area here. What zebra stripes are showing me is how smooth is my connection between neighboring surfaces. So we can see that these black lines are coming down and they connect really smoothly right here. And there's a little bit of kind of a sharp transition let me go ahead and change to high quality, see if that changes it. So I could potentially have made this transition a little bit smoother 
with the angle of my uh, sweep or whatever um, command I used, whether it was a loft or a sweep or whatever. So here's a prime example. You can see how nice these lines are coming across from one blend to the next. It's really nice and smooth. Um, but here you kind of see a little bit of a jog. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate a little bit. Um, and it's not too bad. They're all lined up. The key thing is you want them touching each other. And that's, that's the good news. And so you can see all of these look really, really good. Um, as we get near the cylindrical surface, you can kind of see, again, they're still touching each other. I can also um, do different directions. So vertical, I could say horizontal. So now we're kind of analyzing in horizontal directions. Um, it doesn't help me as much in this case because everything is sort of horizontal. So I would go the opposite, which is vertical. I can also change how tight they are. So I can add a whole bunch of repeats in here to really kind of analyze what that looks like. And I can lock the stripes. So you'll notice as I'm rotating around, they're kind of updating to the screen. But if I say lock stripes, now when I rotate around, they're all locked into place. And so as I'm really analyzing my design, I might lock them down and kind of take a look at what's going on. And then I can unlock them and they update kind of to the orientation of the viewport. And then finally, like I've already shown, you can do the opacity like so. And you can have this on as you're designing and as you're modifying your parts. In fact, I'll go ahead and say OK. And sure enough, you can see right there, there's my analysis and there's the zebra. So let me show uh, a cool example of this. I'm just going to go ahead and create uh, a form. Like so. I'll say OK. Let's inspect our um, zebra analysis on here. And I'm going to leave just kind of a, a light opacity, just, just barely on there. Okay, and as I'm designing, so if I come in here and edit my form, maybe we add some more geometry to this and maybe I'm like, okay, that's a little bit too steep. So let's move these guys back. You can see how the zebra analysis is updating accordingly and I can kind of tweak until I get, you know, nice results or whatever. So I think it's kind of cool that you can do that. Okay. The next one is draft analysis. And the reason we're actually showing um, this is because, again, I had uh, a particular user that wanted to see more about draft analysis. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'm going to, um, let me just activate one of these guys. I'm gonna isolate this particular part. So we can see, and I'm gonna turn off my zebra analysis. You know, it's a plastic component with lots of ribs and standoffs and pockets and all this kind of stuff. And I want to make sure that this can actually be manufactured correctly. So I'm going to come in here and say draft analysis. It's asking for the body, so I'll select the body. And then it's asking for a direction, and you need to specify the direction of the draft or how is it going to be pulled out. Okay, so I might say you know, maybe along this line here, or maybe, uh, you know, the axis of a cylinder or something like that. And we can now visually see a lot of color going on here. So what is happening? So I basically said we're pulling it straight, straight up from that cylinder there. I could also have come in and said, um, let's turn on our origin and pull obviously in the, this direction here. Okay. We then have this draft angle. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of make this a little bit larger here. So you'll notice we've got a lot of green and then we've got a lot of red. And it's basically showing us in color what um, has zero draft. So I want to analyze, maybe I've only got one degree or maybe two degrees of draft on this thing. So I'm gonna set this to zero because I don't want to see undercut draft right now. I'm just going to go ahead and highlight all that and say, let's start at zero. Okay. And 
let's bring this down to one. So I'm going to just say one degree. And now I can visually see that these ribs right here are a different color than the rest of these. And so I can tell that these have one degree of draft. Let's crank this up a little bit. I'm going to go to two and now we can see these are a little bit darker and these are a little bit more like orange color. So now it's showing me that these have two degrees of draft, all of these orange faces, and these red faces have one degree of draft. And if I keep going up, it's basically a selection filter. It's showing me anything between zero and three degrees of draft are going to get colored. So I can see that all of these gray faces are not colored, so they have zero degrees of draft on them. I can also verify that these little standoffs right here, these alignment pins, have zero degrees of draft on them. So I would obviously want to add maybe a degree or two of draft to them. Okay. Again, you can also um, uh, change the opacity of this. Now, I don't find this as useful as the zebra stripes, but you can do that. And then we also have this tolerance zone. So you can say, show me anything between zero and three degrees with a tolerance of plus or minus 0.5 degrees. I could turn that off and you can kind of see how that kind of changes my results a little bit. Okay. So now everything in purple has zero degrees of draft. So the key thing here is you basically specify your minimum and maximum that you're trying to analyze for. So I want to see anything between zero and two degrees of draft. And I can visually see that these have draft and the rest of these do not. So very, very useful, especially if you're doing plastic design. Okay. Um, somebody else asked a really good question. Um, can you inspect an imported model? Now he said um, uh, an STL. I have not tried an STL and I would say probably not because it's not a 3D model. It's just basically a bunch of um, triangles. So I would guess that you couldn't, but um, I would give it a try. But I think it has to be a 3D model. Okay. Um, another question, do the colors mean, you know, is there a legend or anything like that? No, there's not. I honestly, I wish there was, um, where you could say anything inside of here is a certain color or anything outside is a different color, but basically you're just saying, um, you're seeing the colors saying, um, the angle of degrees. So green, you can kind of see is all of these curved surfaces which you know have multiple different de degrees of draft. But then you see these solid colors like the red um, mean you know zero degrees. And let me go ahead and change this to zero. And there you can kind of see those have zero degrees of draft, those gray faces. Okay. I could even check for undercut, you know, if I did a negative or something like that. I could check for undercuts so we can kind of see, um, you know, if, if there was an undercut. I don't know if I have any on this de particular design. So, yeah, good question. Okay, um, curvature map analysis. This is actually very useful. I'm going to use this exact same part here. What's the body? I'll select the body. And you see some colors kind of appear. Now, what is this really showing? It's basically showing the, the intensity of the surface. So we can kind of see right here, it's kind of dark and really dark right here. And it's basically showing the rest of these are nice and smooth, but then we got a tight transition right here where this fillet is. And this is nice and smooth, but then there's a tight transition kind of where this thumb grip area is. And I have a couple options. I can say smooth or bands. So it kind of shows it in bands. I like smooth personally. And then we have different um, types. So Gaussian, uh, principal minimum and principal maximum. Again, if you know better than me, <laughs> I don't know what those 
particularly mean in this case. I usually just leave it to the Gaussian setting. And then I can change the scale of this. So let's crank this way down, okay? And you see, you know, it's showing really nice surface. As I start to increase this, I can visually see where are the intense curved sections. And we can kind of see there, back here, right here. And that kind of makes sense, right? This is where the tight corners are. So, you know, as I increase this, we can kind of see where that, that was tight transitions are. So again, if you're doing a lot of surfacing, um, it's basically showing how tight the, uh, the surface is. Okay. So I can also do high quality. Um, again, depending on the, the surface, it'll just make it a better result. There you go. Then we have section analysis, and that's probably the one I use the most. So let me go ahead and um, unisolate this guy. We'll get the whole assembly back. I'm going to come in here and say section analysis. And it's asking for a face. So I can actually pick a face, for example, this one here, and it's going to slice through using that face as the plane. And I can just drag this arrow back and we can visually see what this is going to look like. So I'm going to kind of slice through until I see my kind of my screwdriver bit area up in here. And let's just kind of zoom up now and I can visually see, you know, clearances and all that kind of stuff. So let's go in here and sure enough, I can see this is probably where that interference was that it was complaining about earlier. So I would probably need to change the, the size of this opening right here. And obviously there's an issue. That's where it's clashing. Okay. I can check for uh, clearances. Like I'm going to zoom up here just a little bit. Looking at it orthographically. I can, you know, see what the, the clearances are between parts, for example. I can take measurements as I'm sitting here in my section view. Okay. Now there's some options in here. I can also, I'm going to rotate it kind of isometrically real quick. I can specify an exact distance. So if I knew the exact center of my part, for example, I could type that in. I can also change the angles so I could rotate to a, a different angle and kind of slice through just like taking the plane and slicing through a different angle. So I'm going to rotate all this over to 90. Okay. Type in 90 here. And now we're slicing through in this direction. So we can kind of see what it looks like in this direction. Kind of cool. Um, I'll set that back to zero. Oh. Rotate that to 90. Um, then we have section color from component or custom. So you can see how they're all different kind of colors, pink and blue and orange. I'm going to say custom, and I can now specify what color um, I want my section to be. Okay. And I also can turn hatching on or off. So we can kind of see, I like it with hatching on personally, um, but you can kind of see that result there. Okay. Okay. The, uh, the next one is center of mass. And this is actually quite cool. So I'm gonna click on center of mass. And then I'm just gonna pick on this part right here. Now it doesn't look like it's doing anything and it doesn't until you say okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. And now we can see this little center of mass icon up here. And it also shows up in my analysis folder. So it's basically figured out with the material that this is made from, where is the center of mass? 
So let's do that again. I'll come in here and say center of mass. Let's pick maybe this chuck right here. I'll say OK. And it has its own center of mass right now. And you can kind of see it being in the middle of that chuck, kind of floating in the middle of it. So that makes sense. Okay. And I, th I think I can measure between these guys. So, yep, I can click on that center of mass and use that as an actual target point for measuring, et cetera, et cetera. So if I was designing something like a model airplane or something that needs to balance or whatever, the center of mass is very, very, very useful. And I can turn these on or off. So I could, I could tweak with my design and see how that would update as I add more material or remove more material. And then finally we have component color cycling and I've shown this before um, but it basically colors your components differently so you can see what's going on in your timeline. Now this is a, actually an imported model so I don't have a timeline going on. Um, but if I were to uh, finish my form, let's go ahead and turn off my zebra analysis. Let's just say I create a couple different parts here. Say okay. and do a uh, component, oh, okay, <laughs> I burned myself. Yeah, they're all the same shape because they're all the same component. I was rushing, let me, uh, let me do this the right way. I'll say new component, call it sphere, create my sphere, so you can see that one's kind of pink. Um, I'll create another component and I'll call this you know, cylinder um, and create a cylinder. You'll see that it's a different component color also. So it basically allows you to visually see, you'll notice in the timeline, I've got something that has blue over it. I've got something that's got um, pink over it and then I got something that's kind of got yellow over it. So that's showing me which of these features have to do with each of these components. So for example, if I came in and um, let's just do something to the cylinder, I'm going to activate that cylinder and let's add a fillet to the top and maybe a chamfer to the bottom. and we go back to the top level, we can see that how the fillet and the chamfer have that yellow bar across the top of it. So it's a very visual representation on finding out which features are affecting which components on the screen. And again, this is a toggle, so I can turn that on or off. Okay, I'm gonna take a look at the chat window. I see there's a lot of comments in there. I wanna make sure I'm answering everybody's questions. Um, this is gonna be a shorter live stream. Uh, a lot of mine have been fairly long, so I wanted to keep this one kind of short and sweet. Um, but hopefully you saw the benefits of a lot of these commands. So, you know, the, uh, the ones I use a lot are the interference, the zebra analysis, draft analysis, and section analysis and <laughs> component color cycling. I actually use almost all of these. Um, so let me take a look at the chat window really quick, making sure I've answered anybody's questions. If you have any, um, go ahead and put them out there. So uh, lots of people saying hello. So hi everybody, thank you for your attendance. I really appreciate it. Um, so I answered the one about, you know, does interference show um, parts that are hidden or does it calculate parts that are hidden? No, it doesn't. Um, so they all ask, can you reference the curvature comb? For example, to mark the point where the direction of the curvature changes. That's a really good question. I have never attempted that. Um, so I, I'm going to say I don't think so. But oops, let's give that a try. So I'll come in here and say curvature comb. Let's just maybe pick um, that edge there. I'm gonna scale it up a little bit, say okay. 
Um, and if I were to try and measure something, yeah, so you can kind of see it, it's not letting me click points or whatever. It's just more of a graphical representation. So I'm trying to catch that end point back here. So unfortunately, no in this case, but that's a, that's a great question. Um, somebody asked a question about, can you analyze an imported STL? Uh, let me see if I can find one really quick. Um, so bear with me. I'm just going to find uh, this guy here. So this is a, an STL file. Um, let's inspect draft analysis. So yeah, you can see it's not an actual body. It would have to be, you know, um, a, basically a B rep representation. So no, you can't use draft analysis. I think you can you can measure. So I could measure, you know, the length of his beak or whatever. Um, so you can do stuff like that. But some of the other things, uh, let's try curvature map analysis. You know, it's requiring a body. So. It has to be a B rep body. So great question on that. Um, so Ahmed asked, you know, how can we know the draft angle value? So that's a good question. Um, so let me use this example here a little bit faster. Let me go in and say draft analysis. What's the body? What's the direction? I'm going to say pointing up. Um, and you can see I get different colors depending on what I've you know, how many times I've analyzed this. So I want to, I don't care about undercuts, so I'm gonna say zero. Um, and I can see all of my faces are gray, except for these ribs. So, you know, gray over here, but blue over here. If I change this to uh, um, one degree of draft, it doesn't really show me anything. So it's not telling me what the degrees of draft are, it's just telling me that it has degrees of draft. Okay, it's just a it's a graphical representation. It's not saying these are, you know, one degree and these are two degrees. Um, in my drill example, let me do that one more time. Let me isolate this guy. We'll inspect them. Oops, not measure. We'll do the. Uh, draft analysis and say zero okay so the basically the colors are giving you the representation so I'm gonna zoom way up on here so what I typically do is I set my draft angle to zero and then I crank this guy down to zero okay um, and you'll see it doesn't allow that and I start to crank up let's go up to one degree and I can see that all of these faces are green or gray okay so what this is telling me is this has zero degrees of draft the, the gray have zero degrees of draft these have draft but they're not one degree of draft these are colored so that's showing me that that's one degree of draft. Now as I increase this, we can see how the color is starting to fade a little bit more yellow. And I go another one and now it's a little bit more orange. And so now I can see that those are my two degrees of draft. And if I keep going, I can now see that these are definitely within my two degrees of draft, my two and a half degrees, my three degrees. And as I keep going, nothing else changes. So I, I can visually see that these are within my degrees of draft and that's how you basically represent that okay so good question um, so somebody asked what does draft mean that's that's a valid question when you're doing plastic injection molding parts um, you don't want to have flat surfaces like you see here because it basically creates a suction and makes it very hard to remove out of a mold so typically they will add a slight angle to this. So as you're pulling it out, it's basically like a cone that gets pulled out. So in plastic injection molding, they typically add like, you know, a small degree of draft. And you can actually do that 
um, using, I'll go ahead and let's just create a quick shape here. I'll show you. Let's do a rectangle. I'll extrude this guy. Now I can add taper angle right here, but I'm not going to. I'm going to just say, okay, I have zero degrees of draft on here. If I were to uh, inspect this, it's showing, you know, all those red faces. Okay. Under modify, we have this draft command. What's the plane? And this confuses some people sometimes, but I always think of it is the plane is if I had like piano hinges on these other faces. So for example, I'm going to say that's my plane. And then what's the face? I'm going to say this is the face. And you'll notice that it's going to hinge along the plane. Okay. If I had said this was the plane, it's now going to hinge along that bottom edge. Okay. So that's what um, the plane is for. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of draft to this. So I'm going to come in here and say my faces are um, these, let's just do these three and we'll leave one not um, drafted. And let's just do maybe five degrees of draft in this case. And we can visually see we now have these angled drafted faces. However, if we look at the side of it, that's drafted, but this one is not because I didn't draft it. When we inspect it now, what's the body? What's the direction? I'm going to turn on my origin and say the direction is straight up in the Y direction. I can see that those are green, but this guy is red. Okay, so it's showing that these have draft, but this one does not. Okay. I could change this to five degrees and you can see how it's getting darker six degrees now it's saying that these are not within my draft tolerance but as soon as I go down they are okay so that's what that means so great question okay um, so so Jan asked does the center of mass honor different materials yes I would want to come in here and set my physical material. So I'm just right clicking on my body saying physical material and I can come in and say um, it's some kind of aluminum and I now this is being calculated for the mass of aluminum. So definitely I recommend um, doing the materials especially if you want to know the overall weight of something or the center of gravity of something. So great question. Um, appreciate the feedback. Everybody likes this kind of stuff. Um, that's all I see in the chat for questions. So again, hopefully you found this useful. I'm keeping this one a little bit shorter. Um, this came from a, a user of Fusion 360 in one of my previous uh, live streams. So definitely, if you want to see something, if you have an idea, throw it in the, uh, the chat window or shoot me an email or something like that. Um, in fact, um, Tuesday's live stream came from an, another user. So uh, I love answering these kind of questions. Hopefully you're finding these useful. I uh, hope to see you on a future live stream and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.